Today we are going to hear a story how God makes things go right with the law of leveret marriage when a woman has to marry her brother-in-law after his wife dies without having a child. Here to tell her story is Tamar, a woman chosen by her father-in-law, Judah, to marry his son whose wife died. Welcome, Tamar. Tell us how you had such bad luck, or uh, was it in the end? No, at first glance, it might sound like bad luck. As written in Genesis chapter 38, I had to pretend to be a prostitute by the side of the road to entice my father-in-law, Judah, um, which I suppose doesn't make me look very good. Okay, so Tamar, for those who haven't read Genesis chapter 38, would you tell us a story from the beginning so that we get the right perspective? All right. From my point of view, this is what happened. My father-in-law, Judah, married a Canaanite woman by the name of Shua. For an Israeli man to marry a Canaanite woman is a deplorable act, forbidden by God. Yeah. By her, he had three sons, Er, Onan, and Shelah. Yes, I know. Uh, Canaanites are considered idol worshipers. Okay, go on. Well, Judah's oldest son, whom he had chosen for me to marry, had passed away. So according to the Leverate marriage law, I would have to marry Judah's second son, Onan, to continue Er's family name. So did that work out? No. Onan didn't want to have a child for his brother. So the Lord put him to death. Now since Judah's third son, Shelah, was too young, was still a child, Judah told me to go back home, live in my father's house, until Shelah was old enough to marry. But Shelah could die, so this would be an imprisonment. I would have to live out my days as a widow. Now what could you do? I thought of a plan. Scholars in the future might look at me as a disgraced woman, but when I heard that Judah was going to the town of Timnah for a sheep shearing, I took off my widow's clothes, and I disguised myself as a prostitute. Like this. I put my bird on my head to attract him, and I slept with him. He gave me a pledge that he would give me a kid from his flock. Well, this sounds bad. No, I was fulfilling the Leverite marriage law by God. Judah was told by his friends that I was a prostitute and had become pregnant. He wanted to have me burned to death. But what he didn't know was I was his daughter-in-law. So I sent a messenger with his seal, cord, and staff to show I was pregnant oh by him. Oh my gosh. Judah then realized it was me and said, she is more righteous than I. Awesome. So did everything turn out for the best? Yes. I gave birth to twin boys, Perez and Zira. Perez came out first. Hello again. This is Pamela Bluewater for J&S Biblical Productions in the studio with Mary Beth Violet of the Church of the Open Window. So Mary Beth, what do you think of Tamar's story from her perspective? Well, first, from our 20th century viewpoint, uh, we might look at Tamar as a prostitute doing a degraded act. But from an old world context before Christ, she was a woman who was loyal and faithful to the laws and customs of her people, the Leverite marriage. So she was righteous like Judah said? Yes. Tamar didn't act out of bitterness or revenge but out of the faithfulness of the will to heaven. And at the appointed time, she removed her garments of the past and embraced the garments she needed for the future, the future of Israel, the ancestors of King David, and all of mankind. Yes, it, it is from her firstborn Perez that King David was descended, followed by King Solomon, uh, reported in the book of Ruth, chapter 4, verse 18. Um, I have a, a newspaper clipping right here that I would like to read to you here. It's, it's about um, how in modern day times, David and Tamar are still very popular names in, in the Jewish culture in Israel. 
Um, so it says David is the most popular name for a Jewish baby boy in Israel and Tamar for a Jewish baby girl. There were 1,447 newborn Davids in Israel in 2018 and 1,289 Tamars. The most popular name for Jewish girls for the third year in a row was Tamar, uh, with 1,289 newborns being given that name in 2018. So um, that's pretty impressive how it still holds true to this day. Um, this is Pamela Bluewater wrapping things up with JNS Biblical Productions, uh, requesting that you read the story of Tamar in Genesis. It's in chapter 38. Good morning. <laughs> 